From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello, and welcome to today's session of the AWS Global Public Sector Partner Awards. I'm your host, Natalie Ehrlich. Today, we're going to focus on the following award for best partner transformation. I'm pleased to introduce our guests, Josh Dursmith, Vice President of Public Sector at Effectual, and Jeremy Yates, Deputy Technology Architect at Ginny May. Welcome, gentlemen. So glad to have you on our show. Hi there. Very nice to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Terrific. Well, Josh, I'd like to start with you. How can companies leverage cloud native solutions to deliver higher quality services? So Natalie, that's a great question. And in the public sector and our, our government customers, we run into this all the time. It's kind of our bread and butter. What, what they can do is the first thing they need to be aware of is you don't have to be afraid of the cloud as some a uh, uh, very obscure technology that is just emerging. It's been out for 10, 11 years now. Uh, customers across government space are using it lock, stock and barrel to do everything from just managing simple applications, simple websites, all the way through hosting their entire infrastructure, both in production and for disaster recovery purposes as well. So the first thing to, to note is just, you know, don't be afraid of the cloud. Um, secondly, it's, it's imperative that they select the right partner who is able to kind of be their Sherpa to go into uh, however far they want to dip their toe into the, into the proverbial cloud waters um, to select somebody who knows whatever it is that they need to go do. So if they want to go AWS, uh, uh, as we are talking about today, pick a partner who has the right experience, past performance designations and competencies with the cloud that they're interested in. Terrific. Well, you know, Jeremy, I'd love to move to you. What does moderniz modernization mean to Jenny May? Sure. Thanks, Natalie. Uh, great to be here. Thanks, Josh, as well. You know, so for Ginny May, modernization is really, uh, it's not just technology, it's holistic across the organization, right? So that includes things like the business, um, not just, you know, the, the IT division. So we're looking into various things to modernize, like our culture and structural changes within the organization. Um, moving to implement some, some proven practices like DevSecOps and continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment. Uh, and then, you know, our overall overarching goal is uh, to give the best and most secure technology to the business that we can to meet the Ginny May mission and the needs of our customers. Terrific. Well, Josh, how is Effectual planning to support Ginny May's modernization plans? So we have been supporting Ginny May for about 14 months now. Uh, and back in September of last year, we were awarded a co-prime 10 year contract for Ginny May to do exactly that. It's to provide all things cloud to Ginny May for 10 years on AWS. And that's including reselling AWS, that's including providing all sorts of professional services to them. And it's, it's providing some third party software applications to help them support their applications themselves. Uh, so what Effectual is doing is kind of uh, uh, threefold. We are supporting the modernization of their process, which Jeremy mentioned a moment ago. And that includes instantiating a cloud center of excellence for Ginny May, which en enables them to modernize the way they do cloud governance while they're modernizing their technology stack. We're also providing a very uh, uh, expert team of cloud architects and DevSecOps engineers to be able to, to you know, design the Ginny May environment, collaborating with our co-prime uh, to ensure that it meets those security requirements, the compliance requirements that Jeremy mentions. Uh, Ginny May is a federal entity, but it also has to adhere to all the finance industry uh, uh, compliance uh, requirements as well. So very strenuous uh, from that perspective. And then the third thing that we're doing to help them, you know, kind of along their modernization journey is uh, instantiating infrastructure as code. So in the cloud, rather than building everything in the AWS management uh, console, we script everything to build it automatically. So it improves consistency. It, it improves the customer experience, regardless of which resource is working on it. And it improves disaster recovery capability as well. And also just quite frankly, the speed by which they can actually deploy things. And Jeremy, how is this transition helping your security really enhancing it now? 
Uh, from a security perspective, uh, we're implementing a number of various tools, um, both you know AWS based as well as other software that that Josh mentioned. Um, so we're able to utilize those in a more scalable manner than we could previously in the traditional data center. Um, we've got a, a number of things such as we're looking at um, multiple vulnerability management products like Tenable IO and Qualys. Um, we're, we're using uh, tools such as Centrify for our, our PAM or privileged access management capabilities. Um, Splunk, uh, a, a pretty industry standard um, software for log and data correlation and analysis. Um, we'll also be using that for some system and application monitoring, um, as well as uh, the McAfee MVision product for endpoint and other cloud service security. So being able to, to pull all those in in a more scalable and more cost efficient way as well from cloud-based services, uh, it's really helped us be able to get those services and integrate them together in a way that you know, we may not previously been able to. Yeah, terrific. Well, Josh, let's move back to you and talk further about compliance. You know, any insight here, how Effectual is building a modern cloud infrastructure to integrate AWS services with third-party tools to really achieve compliance with the government requirements? Just any further insight on that front? That's a great question, Natalie. And I'm going to tag team with Jeremy on this one, if you don't mind, but I'll start off. Um, so Ginny May, obviously I mentioned earlier, has federal requirements and financial requirements. So I'll focus right now on, on those federal aspects. Um, so the tools that Jeremy mentioned a moment ago, we are integrating all of them with AWS native, meaning all of the uh, way we do log aggregation and the various tools within AWS, uh, CloudWatch, CloudTrail, all of those things we're implementing in AWS native, integrating them with Splunk to aggregate all of that information. But then one of the key requirements that's coming up with the federal government in the very near future is TIC 3.0 or Trusted Internet Connection. Uh, basically in the first iteration, a decade or so ago, the government wanted to limit the amount of points of presence that they have with the public facing internet. Fast forward several versions to today, and they're pushing that, that onus back on the various entities like Ginny May and like HUD, which Ginny May is a part of, uh, but they still want to have that kind of central log repository to where all of the all of the security logs and vulnerability logs and things like that get shipped to a central repository, and that will be part of DHS. So what Effectual has done in partnership with uh, uh, Ginny May is create a AWS native solution, leveraging some of those third-party uh, tools that we mentioned earlier to get all of those logs aggregated in a central repository for Ginny May to inspect, ingest, and take action from, but then also provide the mechanism to send that to DHS to do that and correlate that information with everything coming in from feeds across the government. Now that's not required just yet, but we're future-proofing Ginny May's infrastructure in order to be able to facilitate adherence to those requirements when it becomes uh, 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 required. Um, and so Jeremy, I'll, I'll pass it over to you to talk a little bit further about that. Cause I know that's one of the things that's near and dear to your CISO's heart as well as Ginny May overall. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks Josh. Um, so yeah, we, as you mentioned, we have implemented um, uh, sort of a, a hybrid tick model right now um, to, to handle compliance on that front. Um, so we're still using a, you know, some services from the, uh, the legacy or, or existing uh, TIC 2.x models that, that Josh was mentioning, things such as MTIPS, um, uh, the Einstein sensors, et cetera. Uh, but we're also implementing that TIC 3.0 architecture on our own, as Josh mentioned, that, that'll allow us to sort of future-proof and, and, and seamlessly really transition to uh, once we make that decision or guidance comes out or you know, mandates or such. Um, so that effort is is good to future proof us from compliance perspective. Um, also, you know the tools that I mentioned, uh, then Josh reiterated, those are you know extremely important to our our security and compliance, right? Being able to ensure you know the the integrity and the confidentiality of of our systems and our data is extremely important, um, not both not just both on the or not only on the government side, but as Josh mentioned, the finance side as well. Terrific. Well, I'd love to get your insight too on AWS workspaces. Um, if either one of you would like to jump in on this question, how did they empower the Ginny May team to work remotely through this pandemic? That's a great question. I guess I'll start and then we'll, we'll throw it to Jeremy. 
Um, so obviously, uh, Effectual started working with Ginny May about three weeks after the pandemic formally started. So perfect timing for any new technology uh, uh, initiative. But anyway, we, we started talking with Jeremy and with his leadership team about what is required to actually facilitate and enable our team, as well as the government resources and the other contractors working for Ginny May to be able to leverage the new cloud environment that we were building. And the very obvious solution was to implement a virtual desktop infrastructure uh, uh, type solution. And obviously Ginny May had gone all in on Amazon Web Services. So it became the national nat natural fit to look first at AWS workspaces. Um, so we have implemented that solution. There are now hundreds of Ginny May and Ginny May contractor resources that have AWS workspaces functioning in the GovCloud regions today. And that's a, a very novel approach to how to facilitate and enable not only our team who is actually configuring the infrastructure, but all the application developers, the security folks, and uh, the leadership on the Ginny May side to be able to access, review, inspect, check, log, uh, et cetera, through this remote capability. Uh, it's interesting to note that Ginny May has been entirely remote since the pandemic initiated. You know, Jeremy's coming to us uh, from, from West Virginia today. I'm coming to us from National Harbor, Maryland. And we are operating totally remotely with a team of 60 folks about supporting this specific initiative for the cloud, not to mention the hundreds that are supporting the applications that Ginny May runs to do its day-to-day -day business. So Jeremy, mm -hmm. if you wouldn't mind talking about that day-to-day -day business that Ginny May has and, and kind of what the, the mission statement of Ginny May is and how us enabling these workspaces, uh, you know, facilitates that mission. Sure, you know, so the, the part of the overall mission of Ginny May is to to ensure affordable housing is is made available to uh, the American public. Um, that's HUD and and Ginny May as part of that, and we provide um, mortgage-backed securities to help enable that. Um, so we back a lot of uh, VA loans, um, FHA, those sort of uh, loans. Um, workspaces has been great in that manner uh, from a technology perspective, I think, because. As you mentioned, Josh, it's really uh, eliminated the need for uh, on-premise infrastructure, right? It, it, we can be geographically dispersed, we can be mobile, um, whether we're from the East Coast or West Coast, uh, we can access our environments securely, uh, and then we can you know, administer and operate and maintain the technology that the business needs. To, to fulfill the mission. Um, and, and because we're able to do that quickly and securely and effectively, uh, that's really helpful for the business. Terrific. And, um, you know, I'd like to shift gears a bit and, uh, you know, discuss what you're looking ahead toward. What is your vision for 2021? How do you see this partnership evolving? Yeah, that's Jeremy, great. Why don't you take that one first? <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, you know, definitely some of the things we look forward to in, in 2021 uh, and, and as we evolve here is we're going to continue our cloud journey, um, it, you know, through practices like DevSecOps, you realize that uh, th that journey is never done. It's always a continual improvement process. It's a loop to uh, continually work towards um, a, a few uh, specific things or at least one specific thing that we're looking forward to in the future. Uh, as Josh mentioned earlier, was our, our TIC 3.0 initiative. Um, so with that, we think we'll be future-proofed um, as there's been a lot of um, a lot of recent cybersecurity activity and things like that that's going to create um, opportunities, I think, for the government. And Ginny May is really looking forward to, to leading in that area. Mm -hmm. And Josh, can you weigh in quickly on that? Absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, we're very much looking forward to receiving authority to operate. Uh, with our production environment. We have been preparing for that for this last year plus, uh, but later on this summer, we will achieve that ATO status. And uh, we look forward to starting to migrate the applications into production for Ginny May. And then for future proof, uh, it's as Jer Jeremy mentioned, it's a journey and we're looking forward to cloud optimizing all of their applications to ensure that they're spending the right money in the right places uh, and, and ensuring that they're not spending over on any of the one given area. So we're very excited to optimize and then see what the technology that we're being able to provide to them will bring to them from an idea and a conceptual future for Ginny May. 
Well, thank you both so very much for your insights. It's been a really fantastic interview. Our guests, Josh Dursmith, as well as Jeremy Gates, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Terrific. Well, I'm your host for theCUBE, Natalie Ehrlich. Do stay tuned for more coverage. Thanks so much for watching.